So let's talk about why this city will be Rome. I'm going to explain why. Let's look at verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. Now look at this. So the seven angels who have the seven vials, notice that one of them come out and talk to John. So one of these angels who had one of these vials and poured it out, it could be the first one, it could be the third one, it could be the seventh one, we're not really sure. Just says one of those seven angels who had the vial and talked uh, with me. So he's talking to John, <coughs> saying unto me, <coughs> come hither. So come here, that's what he's saying, come over here. I will show unto thee the judgment. So the angel's going to show the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So this angel's going to, sh uh, calls out this being as what? A great whore? And she sits on what? Waters. So she's sitting on many waters. Okay, so what in the world? Whoever this woman is, I don't know whoever this woman is, but whoever this woman is, let me clear off some of the vial lines over here. She is symbolized as a woman who is sitting on waters. And that is going to be referring to actually Babylon. Now notice that this woman, she is sitting on waters. Did you notice that in your Bible? <clears throat> if she is sitting on the waters, then something to think about is this, is that if she is uh, sitting upon the many waters, what is this waters referring to? Later on in Revelation 17, I'm going to show you that these waters are actually referring to people. They are actually referring to people. But while they're referring to people over here, some people confuse that with Revelation 13. The Antichrist, he comes out of where? He comes out of the water, actually. So because the Antichrist, he comes out of the waters, some people think that that's referring to people. Now remember, I mentioned to you before that the water where the Antichrist comes out of could be referring to the Mediterranean Sea. It could be referring to the Mediterranean Sea. But... People argue that it won't make sense because the waters is used as a metaphor concerning about peoples with Revelation chapter 17. Wouldn't that make sense? Well, there are a few things where I would disagree with them on that one. The first thing is, notice over here, it says uh, at verse 1, sitteth upon many, many waters, because it's referring to peoples over here. That is distinguished from Revelation 13. Look back at Revelation 13, which does not even say waters over here. It's singular, and it says out of the where? Sea. Isn't that what it said? Yeah. A being comes out of the sea. Now, are there beings that can actually dwell in the sea? Look at context. Look at, look at context at chapter 12, okay? Chapter 12, verse 9, Satan and his minions lose the battle up in the heavens, up in outer space there. At verse 12, that's why they descend down. See that? They descend down. When they descend down, notice right here, it says at verse 12, there are what? Inhabitants of the earth and the sea. See, there are people who actually dwell not just on a literal earth, but on where? A literal sea. So can a person come out of the sea? Yeah, chapter 13, verse 1 then, following that context. That would make sense. If you're saying that a sea would refer to uh, different nations or people, that wouldn't make sense at Revelation 12, 12, because it says earth and sea. The nations are covered, already covered concerning the earth over there. Another thing is when you look at chapter 13, verse 1, it says that the Antichrist rises up out of the sea. Why? Because people can be dwelling in the sea. 
Now, if you don't remember, I talked to you before at Revelation 13.1 and Revelation 12.12 12, that during the timeline of the tribulation, there can be dwellers, uh, there can be, so to speak, underwater dwellers, not just, uh, not just the surface dwellers. Now, that kind of phrase you already notice from the movies where they're talking about in uh, DC and Aquaman and etc. That thing actually is is just a, a sci-fi fantasy world. Why? Because it's trying to imitate off of Scripture where it's trying to tell you the real thing. During the timeline of the tribulation, there will be dwellers in the sea. Who's connected with this dwellers in the sea? The Antichrist at chapter 13, verse 1. Now, the Antichrist, when we study this figure, he is not just a regular man. We know that this person is something very demonic, so he is more like a demonic per person more than just a human person. He is more like a demonic person more than a human person. Coming up out of the sea, I mentioned to you before, would be the Mediterranean region. Now, the question is, why do I say that this is referring to the Mediterranean region? Wouldn't it be easier to say that it's just simply referring to uh, many groups of people, so the Antichrist is just coming out living amongst humans? Well, I think that's just too simplistic because chapter 12 and chapter 13 shows that, no, this seems to be more literal here. Whereas chapter 17, we know it's not literal. We know that it's metaphorical. Why? Because script, scripture will show you if it's referring to a figurative or literal way. If you, uh, we... If you later read chapter 17, at verse 15, it explains that, hey, when it's talking about the woman and the waters, this is all symbolic. It's representing peoples. It's representing the city of Babylon, etc., etc. See, so it, the Bible will show you if it's symbolic. Just to, uh, The first rule is take it literally as it says, unless it's impossible, unless the context really demands that it cannot be literal. And actually, context shows that it, it is more literal than figurative. So by context, I believe that it is more so a literal sea, but why pick the Mediterranean, right? Why not, for example, I think a very good candidate would be the Dead Sea. Why not the Dead Sea? Why do you choose the Mediterranean Sea? Well, the thing is this. Keep reading chapter 13 and verse 1 over there. If you read that passage... Concerning about the Mediterranean, uh, concerning about the sea, the Antichrist comes out of where? Of what nations he's going to consist of? He consists of, at verse 2, bear, lion, and the body is a leopard. See that? This is very what? This is very Eurocentric. This is very Eurocentric. The ethnicity of the Antichrist at the book of Daniel, chapter 11, we recall, he is a what? Syrian Jew. He is a Syrian Jew, but his operation, his main operation will be, some, will be more Eurocentric at verse 2. Now, think about the best sea region then where he can be born out of, but also have operations in a Eurocentric platform. It's the Mediterranean region where it uh, connects with Europe as well as the nation of Israel and Syria. That's the reason why the Mediterranean Sea would be a very better candidate over here. So the Antichrist will pop out of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, when this Antichrist pops up out of the Mediterranean Sea, the Bible calls him the beast, right? When this beast comes out of the Mediterranean Sea, you'll notice over here, that, no, uh, I just lost my uh, train of thought. Remember, uh, my mind's a fuzz today. I'm a little tired. Uh, what was I about to say concerning about the Antichrist coming out of the sea? He's Eurocentric. He comes out of there. Oh, yeah, so now I remember. So if, if this Antichrist comes out of the sea, it brings to thought, what about Revelation chapter 6? Isn't he going to be a UFO alien? That's the question, right? Look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, 
And then notice at verse 1, it seems like that he's just coming out of nowhere from what? The seal. Once the seal is loosed, he just comes out of nowhere. Where are the seal? When Jesus Christ opens the seals, where does he open them? If you read chapter 5, the seals that he opens up are up in where? Heaven. So that's why if, he, if the Antichrist comes out of the seal, and this is from above, and then all of a sudden he just pops up out of nowhere at chapter 6, verse 1, it sounds like that he's just going to pop out of the UFO from nowhere. And if the Antichrist is, is the Pope, Roman power, and God says Satan's seat is what? Is Rome. Then that's why some Bible believers talk about, and Dr. Rutman mentioned this in his Adler commentary, that as soon as the tribulation starts, all of a sudden comes this flying saucer, doo -doo 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 -doo, and hovers over St. Peter's Cathedral and then lands down, and out comes this massive figure, 13 feet tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, etc., etc., saying, peace be unto you, with this bow, right? Yeah. Why? Because uh, the bow... The bowman's finger. Why? Because the Antichrist, his weaponry is like a bow. Why? To claim peace, but the Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5, it's destruction. So see that? Peace, but then actually destruction. And I already explained that in Revelation chapter 6. Now, how does this harmonize then with Revelation chapter 13? He comes up out of the sea. Well, it's not a question for Bible believers because we don't believe UFOs come up there, they come from below underground. That's why he can rise up out of the sea. Why? Because this UFO all of a sudden comes up out of the sea and then flies out of heaven throughout heaven and then lands on St. Peter. That's the idea. So this can harmonize together. All right, I hope that you learned something interesting over there. Now let's return to Revelation chapter 13, uh, not 13, chapter 17. Now let's explain further about Babylon who sitteth upon the many waters, which is referring to people. Now let's explain her. We already talked about the Antichrist. Let's talk about Babylon. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. So ever this woman is, she has such power where she can seduce the kings of the earth. So the Bible uh, uses that metaphorical phrase where they commit fornication with her. And the inhabitants of the earth, so people all over the world, have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So they were, they were made drunk with what? Metaphorically, her wine, that's called fornication. All right, so let's look at this wine, shall we? So this wine is actually known as something sexual, fornication. Notice the sexual terms over there. Fornication, whore, etc., etc. All of this is tied together in this metaphorical phrase for an important symbolic image here. So let's look at this important imagery that God is looking at. We're going to look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 16. Is it accurate that this is referring to something metaphorical? rather than something physical. Yes, because look at Revelation, uh, not Revelation, Ezekiel 16, Ezekiel 16. What you're going to see is that these metaphors and this symbolism is actually going to be more into a spiritual world, a spiritual plane. Remember, I talked to you about another important method of interpretation is what? Spiritual application. So what you're going to see starting out as something figurative, you're going to see something more as something spiritual this time. So look at this transition from figurative to spiritual. Look at this, Ezekiel chapter 16. And we will read verse 26. And he's talking to Israel here. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms, to provoke me to anger. You'll also look at verse 25. Thou hast built thy high places at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to everyone that passeth by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Now look at this descriptive language at 2526. Basically, the Bible is pointing out that she's just opening herself to fornication, and that she's practically opening herself up to anybody that passed by. And notice right here, verse 26, the Egyptians, verse 27, Philistines, 
Verse 28, the Assyrians. Verse 29, Canaan and Chaldeans. So this kind of phrase that the Lord is seeing as, he's seeing, even though he's not seeing them physically fornicating, he's seeing them as, hey, you're fornicating in my spiritual eyes. So returning to Revelation 17, in God's spiritual eyes, he's seeing this woman committing fornication with all the other nations spiritually in his spiritual eyes. Now, some people think that because this matches with Ezekiel 16, that this is referring to Israel. But actually, I'm not going to really show everything in, this, uh, in today's lesson, but later on I'm going to show you that's not really true. For people who are jumping ahead of me and, again, want to be rash and throwing a comment, again, just look at my video channel. Just go to our video channel, and in our specific video channel, just type down in the search bar, Babylon. And then I already gave the explanation over there. But in our next Revelation Bible study, I'll explain further concerning about Babylon, this whore of Revelation 17, that this is definitely referring to the Roman Catholic Church. And let me just add that before I close. I mean, it has to be noted, right? The words must show who this wicked system is. Roman Catholicism. Judgment Day is coming for that wicked system that has damned billions to hell and has murdered millions That's throughout right. history. Judgment Day will come for Amen. her, and then I'll explain that later on throughout our next Revelation verse-by-verse -verse Bible study.